Hi there. Are you ready for your holidays? In the Northern Hemisphere, it's summertime and it's nearly main holiday season. Have you thought about packing your suitcase? Will you take a suitcase on your holidays that looks like this? Huge. Or one that looks perhaps a little more like this? A small suitcase. In this podcast, let's look at how you pack your suitcase and at the psychology behind this. Are you an overpacker or an underpacker? Maybe how you pack your suitcase reveals more about your personality than you'd thought. To pack your suitcase, that means to put into a bag or luggage the things you need when you travel. The purpose of this podcast is to give you a really good English lesson, travel vocabulary, but while tackling something interesting at the same time. And stick around to the end of this podcast for tips on packing from seasoned globetrotters. Perfect your packing skills and in the process, enhance your English language learning. That's what we're doing today. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. So I'm routinely what you might call an overpacker. I pack too much in my suitcase. If I'm packing to go on holidays, or even if I'm only packing to go away for a few days, then I tend to take too much rather than too little. It's always been the case. I'll sort my clothes into outfits. That's O-U-T-F-I-T-S. That means things I'd wear together, clothes I'd wear together. But I'll always take more outfits than the number of days I'm going for or the number of occasions I need to dress for. I'm not sure what I imagine is going to happen to me. Maybe someone pours a bucket of water over me or I slip in mud and have to get completely changed. I'm not sure, but I overpack. And this overpacking goes for shoes as well as clothes. Shoes take up a huge amount of space in your suitcase. How many pairs do you need for a week? I find it difficult to think of being without several pairs of shoes. What if one pair decide to give me a blister? And if I'm taking books? Well, yes, I'm old fashioned. I like paper actual books rather than virtual books. I don't use a Kindle or a digital device for my reading. And I find I'll take many more books than I have a chance of reading on my holiday. Books like shoes take up a lot of packing space. So probably a good packing tip for me, use a Kindle or an audio book instead. So why do some people overpack? Maybe it's related to this. Are you an anxious traveller or do you travel with a casual attitude? That's C-A-S-U-A-L. Overpacking may reflect how much anxiety is attached to travelling for you. I think we're all somewhat triggered into fight or flight when we travel. It's more anxiety provoking than we realise. Taking a flight in particular is something that makes us a little more anxious and people have certain habits around the airport. Do you find you need to be at the airport, say, three hours before your flight takes off? Or are you a casual traveller who arrives with minutes to spare? At the boarding gate, that's the place you get to just before you get onto the plane. Do you anxiously queue at the desk early in the hope of getting that luggage space in the overhead locker just above your seat? Or do you remain casually sitting for a while while the queue dies down and others board the plane first? If you're an anxious traveller, then you're probably in the first group. If you travel with a more casual attitude, you're probably in the second. Anxious travellers imagine all types of catastrophes. That's C-A-T-A-S-T-R-O-P-H-E, catastrophe. And a catastrophe is a bad happening, a terrible event. And in English, we have invented a verb to go with this noun, catastrophe 
we have a verb to catastrophize. That's C-A-T-A-S-T-R-O-P-H-I-S-E. And if you're someone who catastrophizes, then you probably imagine the worst thing possible is going to happen. Or you've got a whole set of things you can imagine happening, none of which are good. That's called catastrophizing. So if you're one of those people queuing at the boarding gate before you've even been called, underneath it all, you're possibly quite anxious. You're imagining that although your seat is booked, although your ticket has been validated, somehow you're not going to get on that plane unless you're the first in the queue. So if you're given to anxiety while travelling, you might also be an overpacker because your imagination has thought of all kinds of catastrophes, all sorts of things that could happen. And you put items into your suitcase that may help you in these imaginary situations. So if you're someone who overpacks, whatever the reason, it might just be that you like a lot of shoes or you have difficulty selecting which outfits you want to wear on your holiday, then listen on for some really good tips on how not to overpack your suitcase. Tips from seasoned travellers. First and foremost, the golden rule is make a list. And don't just make a list at the last minute when you're packing your suitcase. Make a list a few days before, and then you've got time to remember items which you forgot at first. Easier to add them to your list than it is to buy them at your destination. Making a list means you're less likely to forget the essentials. So unless you're going to the jungle, if you arrive without a toothbrush, perhaps that's not such a big deal. You can probably buy one when you're there. But if you forget your shoes or your underwear, or you forget your swimming costume or your sunglasses, then that's probably a bit more expense to buy them when you get to your holiday destination. Next time you pack, why not leave some room for souvenirs? A souvenir, this is a French word, S-O-U-V-E-N-I-R, souvenir. That means an item that you buy on your holiday, which will remind you of your holiday afterwards, which will help you remember your holiday afterwards. From the French verb to remember, souvenir. So leave a little bit of space for any items that you might want to bring back with you. It would be a shame not to be able to get them because there's no room in your suitcase. And if, like me, you pack your bag to capacity, absolutely full, then there's a risk that the fastening or the zip might break when you're on your holidays. And buying a suitcase in an airport is an expensive business, an expensive thing to do. Other ways to cut down on your packing? Study the weather in your destination. If you're someone like me who, going to Greece in the summer, might pack a jumper just in case it's unseasonably cold, then reassuring yourself of the weather in your destination is a good idea. If you're coming to the UK, then yes, the weather is unpredictable, so you might need your bikini and your jumper. But most places in the world, the weather is predictable. And if you know it's going to be 42 degrees and hot and sunny, you don't need to pack a jumper. Also check out, is it possible to do laundry? If you've rented a holiday villa with a washing machine, maybe you don't need to take as many clothes with you. Maybe there can be more spare room in your suitcase for souvenirs. Or you might be in a hotel with a laundry service, even better. Check whether towels are provided. A towel, T-O-W-E-L. It's that thing you use to dry yourself after your shower. And if you're on a beach or swimming pool holiday, you might need a beach towel as well. If these are provided, then that can save a lot of weight and room in your suitcase. It can also be a good idea to pack your suitcase a few days before you travel. Then you can review your packing and it gives you time to remember last minute those items which you'd left off your list. If you're going away for a week or less, why not invest in some miniature toiletries? Miniature? M-I-N-I-A-T-U-R-E. 
A miniature is a smaller copy of something. So your favourite shampoo, your shower gel, your conditioner for your hair, they all probably come in a smaller bottle version. Yes, I know they're more expensive, but you can refill them and use them again. That's one of my economic traveller's tips for you. Hauling around full-size shampoo and conditioner bottles, that's a lot of weight. And anyway, in the UK, we're all used to that 100 millilitre restriction, certainly on our hand luggage. And maybe one more thing, perhaps also, like me, you use a hairdryer avidly. You might check out whether or not the place you're staying actually provides a hairdryer. Again, that's a bit less weight and a bit more room in your suitcase. Maybe you want to have a think about whether you take your laptop or not. Do you take technology other than your phone? Perhaps it's nice to be free of it for a bit. Have a digital detox, as we say in English. Whatever you decide to do, if you're going on holiday this summer, then I wish you all the best. I hope you have a lovely time. And hopefully I've made you think about what type of traveller you are, whether you're an anxious traveller or a casual traveller, and about what you put in your suitcase. If you'd like more help with learning English, then don't forget to sign up for our free course, The Seven Rules of Adept English. This course will help you with how to use the podcast to best advantage for your English language learning. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.